So today we're going to talk about genes, um, specifically single layer genes. Uh, and before we get into why I think these four are interesting and why I'm reviewing them, I want to just briefly talk about what single layer is and what AAA safety rating means. So we'll start there. Uh, in Europe, there is a set of regulations governing um, protective gear for motorcycling. Uh, it has a series of different levels around safety. And for uh, pieces of, of protective gear with protectors in them, that is hip and knee and shoulder pads, etc., there's three levels, A, AA, AAA. And the more A's you add in, and hypothetically, the more protective it is and the more stringent the tests are. Um, you'll see a lot of retailers, um, some English ones in particular, talk about how, ooh, my AAA gene is as protective as leather. And I don't think that's an accurate statement. What I think it's an accurate statement to say is it has passed the same tests. And why am I stressing that? Because we have four different pairs here with four different pair, uh, sets of materials. And we have no idea how they compare to each other beyond they all pass the test. Um, because this pair of jeans made with Aramid and this pair of jeans made with primarily nylon and cotton um, are both AAA and are unquestionably both nowhere near as protective as a pair of, let's say, $180 RST branded um, leather pants. They just aren't. So that being said, um, what do we mean by single layer? Well, single layer doesn't mean that it's just the denim. But what it does mean is that it's only relying on the outer layer of denim to meet that test norm. So for protection, it's the same bit of, you know, denim material or whatever uh, all the way around. So, um, you know, traditional jeans, you had like a, a normal cotton denim on the outside and maybe a fully lined Kevlar, you Kevlar patches it at your knees and your, your bum or whatever. These aren't relying on an inner liner. It's the outer bit is the protection. That's really great because it means you have the exact same protection everywhere. That's not as great because multiple independent tests have shown that um, inner reinforcement layers tend to do better in a very long slide than a, a single layer of like basically anything. Uh, even, even leather hypothetically will eventually wear through. Uh, which is why race suits have multiple layers of leather in your high impact areas. Okay, so that's the introduction to single layer and triple layer. Let's talk about the jeans. I have four pairs here. Um, they're all European brands. Three of them are made in Europe. Uh, Italy, Italy, Europe. That's helpful. And then uh, the first iteration of these were made in Europe. Speedy is now making the next one in China. Okay. Um, fit wise, uh, we have a pair here from PMJ, uh, and you'll see there's a couple photos of me wearing it. Um, these are the tightest fitting. Uh, I am a 33 inch actual measured jeans waist. So where, where a waist sits, I'm 33 inches around. Um, these are marked as both a 34 or 36. So that is the best indication of what vanity sizing means. 34 is the like American measurement. Uh, 36 is the actual inches around the waist. Um, normally I'd wear a 32. I tried a 32 around the first time. They fit my waist just fine. They were way too tight on my, uh, my thighs. So the PMJs fit very slim, especially if you're muscular. You will need to either size up because they have limited stretch or don't buy them. Uh, they, are, they are by far the slimmest. The race reds, um, these are a 32 by 32. They fit, as you can see in a couple of the photos here, um, they're a slim straight fit, um, not tapered, not particularly tapered. They have a lot of stretch. Uh, they are extremely pleasant to wear and extremely uh, easy to fit. I think they are uh, a normal vanity size. If you're a 32 in American size stuff, by 32, if you're 34, so on and so forth. I think these have a lot of give to them and they're easy to get fit. The John Doe's, um, I'd seen people say that these fit generous. I scale and just to size down. Um, 
I bought the mono, so they have a number of different mono layer models. I bought the like cargo model. Um, and I went down to 31 and they barely fit. Uh, again, 33 actual, this is a 33 actual. So it's, it's pretty close. The stretch is what's helping me get through it here. Um, so I would recommend, I, I, I mean, may, maybe people are used to non-vanity sizing. I don't know. I would try, especially if you're American, I try your normal jean size first. Speedy, um, these are, I, I think, a pretty true to size as well. Uh, you can see on me, they're a slim fit, but not not skinny. And the closer to the skinny are the PMJs. Um, and these have a fair bit of stretch. You can see the fabric has um, both between the actual stretch uh, thread in it and then the way that that fabric is woven. Um, they have a lot of give in, in all four directions. I have worn these, and these are a 33. I probably could have scaled down to a 32, but I had sized up in the past um, just to make sure I could wear them because I was ordering these from overseas at the time. Um, and also because I was wearing these over armored leggings. Um, so these are the, I've had these the longest, the PMJs. Um, I have crashed in these um, and I ordered another pair, so it's a good endorsement. But these have a, a fairly normal fit. So if you're athletic, these will fit you just fine. Again, try, and in my opinion, try your normal size. So hopefully that's a little helpful on fit. Okay, comfort. So from fit, we go into comfort. And we'll just work backwards. And you heard a little bit of it already, but uh, the big thing of these two is that these have gussets. Gussets are amazing for comfort on the bike. They let you straddle the fuel tank without the pants pulling in on your groin. They let you move around if you're a more active rider, if you're doing standing and sitting, etc. They don't pull the protector pockets on the knees to the inboard. So huge comfort thing here. Again, these have a lot of stretch. These are very comfortable. Um, they have a nice, good-sized gusset here at the crotch, and I'll grab a photo of that. A uh, nice crescent gusset, half moon, whatever it's called. I forget the formal term. Anyway, uh, nice, moves very well on you. The first generation did not have that, so that was a huge jump for me on comfort-wise from the original J, J, J Dynemas to these Evos. Um, and airflow is also tremendous. Um, so because of the way that the fabric is woven, the fact that it's Dyneema, which is a very uh, comfortable to wear in heat, it, it does it like transmits, um, I forget the, the, the like chemical term for it, but it, it has some funny properties when it comes to heat. If you get this near something really hot, like if you have, if you're on a Harley maybe, or a Motoguzi and you have exposed cylinders, or you if you have a very hot exhaust or radiator fans, um, this will shove that right through to your legs more than any of these other ones will because of the fabric. Um, but on the flip side, I have worn these well into the 90s in the US uh, heat-wise, and these have been great. Same thing here. Uh, I find these very comfortable to wear, a very high airflow material. You have tremendous gusseting that runs up the middle, you know, the inner part of the leg, all the way up into the groin which lets you get some great spacing for airflow right through your thighs and over um, your groin and the big blood vessels there. Very comfortable. If you spread your legs a little bit, it's wonderful. Um, and the airflow is quite good. I have, I've worn these both in the boot and over the, uh, and outside the boot um, in temperatures up to close to 90 in the sun. You can see they're hypothetically camo. They look almost black in most light uh, or dark gray. No issues. These are actually like a black wash. The fabric, again, is very comfortable, extremely stretchy, by far the most comfortable fabric to wear of the four. Um, doesn't have a gusset, that's the downside. Does have external armor pockets, the only one of these four to have that, so it's really nice, especially for comfort when walking around off the bike. Um, and these are a, the fabric itself, again, it's very stretchy, doesn't bind on you at all. But because it does have a gusset, I did notice the armor coming in a little bit on my knees when I was tucked in on the bike. Um, so there's a little downside there. But airflow is pretty good. However, I did notice stopped in direct sun. It's, it is a dark wash, um, and that is a downside. I did notice the, the heat kind of come again. But once it got moving, it was fine. Um, the last one is the PMJs. These look like a normal pant. They feel like a fairly normal pair of jeans on you. 
um, which is good and bad. It's bad because they have no gusset and they're sewn like a normal pair of jeans, which means of the four, I find that my knee armor gets pulled into the inboard side of my knees the most when I'm sitting on the bike. Like, in fact, the, the seam like pulls back into me. It's not ideal. And because these are an aramid weave, as you can see from the yellow, I personally find aramid to breathe the least, especially in a flat weave like this. So these are also the warmest. I find when it gets up to around 80, I don't, I don't wear these much anymore. They get uncomfortable, which is too bad because they're a beautiful looking pair of jeans um, and, and they feel really nice to you know, wear around. Okay, so that's fit and cover. Let's talk about protection. And I'm gonna line them all up here again. Because before I talk about materials and crashing uh, in, in these pants, I wanna talk about the armor that comes with them. So, we have four different sets of armor. And they're all very different. Three are from a external company. So these guys all buy their armor from somebody else. This is actually Speedy branded armor. Um, they, they have their own. Um, I think that the John Doe and the PMJ are using the same brand. I believe that these are, I mean, that you can tell they look very similar, um, very similar uh, density, uh, material feeling. I think they're both ETP, right? Yeah. So I'm like 99% sure that Impact Tech is the brand that both, well, I know for sure from these, pretty sure that the XTM branded armor is also from Impact Tech. I think John Doe is changing over. I believe they're using a new armor provider in some of their monolayer stuff and uh, going forward. Um, this is the worst armor. It is the thinnest. It's a little bit thicker in the John Doe, but it's pretty thin in both. Um, they don't provide test norms. I don't think it's very, it, it's particularly protective. Better than nothing, absolutely. Um, but of the four, I think this is the, the lowest level one armor. Um, the level one armor that comes with the Speedy is pretty good. Um, they're the only brand that provides their test certificates with the, all the gear they sell. Um, and I know that the max transmitted force on the near armor particular is at the cutoff of level two just above. Um, they sell level two of both of these and they're fractionally thicker. So pretty good armor, tall, very long, a little bit hot on the um, knee especially because there's hypothetical airflow holes but they're mostly covered and it doesn't really do a ton. So um, it's not my favorite armor. I think it's protective. I just don't personally like it that much. Uh, the one nice thing is it is height adjustable, so you can make sure you get it uh, using a big piece of Velcro over the pockets, uh, in the armor pockets, so you can get exactly where you need it. So that's that's a really good safety feature because you want your joints to be covered in a crash. So that brings us to the race reds who are using the well-known Sastec armor. The most protective of everything here. It's level two, first of all, um, and Sastec is very good level two on top of that. Uh, this is the hip armor. It's enormous. It is the size of basically everybody else's knee armor, uh, very near. In fact, it is bigger than the knee armor that comes with it. Uh, this does cup your knee nicely though, which is which is good because the pocket is just kind of there. Like there's, there's nothing keeping the armor like really firmly fixed in place. Like these are quite tight pockets. This has Velcro. Um, this one, because you can take it in and out, um, it's just kind of a pocket, but I haven't, I didn't have any issues with it staying over my knee when I rode. Um, you could probably swap these back and forth. I think this would fit in the knee without issue, or you could buy a set of this. And I think that would make it even more comfortable. But from a protection aspect, this one's an armor, second best, distant um, fourths, third and fourths. However, it's very simple, especially in the John Doe, to buy a set of D3O Ghost. And I am not plugging D3O as like, I wish I was sponsored by somebody and I am not, but I do like D3O Ghost armor. Uh, and I know they have a level two coming out soon, which I'm pretty excited about because it is both extremely flexible. It has airflow. Um, all, all of this uh, flows right through to your knee, which is really comfortable when you're riding in hot weather. 
Um, it forms to you well. And my partner crashed wearing a set of these um, and didn't even realize she'd hit her knee until we looked at the, um, we were going about 45 miles an hour. She went off the back of my bike and um, the, and, until we looked at her leggings and saw that they were all scuffed up from hitting the pavement on both knees, she had no idea. So uh, if, if it was me and it's what I've done, I would replace these with D3O Ghost um, and these as well. Um, assuming it fit the hole. These I think are great stock. These are all right. I have worn these over separate armor leggings and I like that as well. The downside is because it is Velcro, you need to either get Velcro attached or buy um, like Sastic or Ghost or something with Velcro sewn on to use. Okay, so that's enough about armor. Let's talk about material protection. We have three different strategies here. We have Use one extremely abrasion resistant and tear resistant material. And then we have use a blend of stuff. So let's start with these two first because these are kind of more traditional. The PMJ uses a Toron blended fabric. Toron is Toron. Is the second oldest Aramid synthesized and um, or way like company uh, brand, whatever. Of a synthesized Aramid. So DuPont was first with Kevlar and the company behind Toron was second um, a very long time ago, like early 20th century. So it's it's not just some like off-brand stuff is kind of where I'm going with that. So you have a single layer. I'm not sure what the percentage is. I think it's at least 30% based on my experience with other um, Kevlar and similar blended fabrics and the amount of yellow you see is a good example that there's a lot of Kevlar thread or, or uh, Toron thread here. They do not list it on the materials um, uh, tab. It simply says 98% T-Tex, 2% elastine, 11 and a half ounce denim. So it's a lightweight denim, 11 and a half ounces is not particularly heavy. Um, it has 2% stretch and it has a good bit of Aramid. So I think this is a fairly protective gene. Aramid is very heat resistant. So friction is heat. And if you were to go in a slide, this would keep your skin um, from heating up likely. Um, when I flip these inside out, which I'll throw a picture up here, you can see they don't have a ton of mesh, um, just a little bit on the front side for the armor pockets and for comfort. Um, it is known from safety researchers that having a layer of like a slip liner of comfort mesh is really good for friction burns on the skin um, from the material moving on you. So they could use some more. Um, but I think these are pretty protective. Again, comfort's not the most amazing, but you have a very good percentage of Aramid fiber uh, keeping your skin safe. Okay. The other kind of well-known fabric, um, this is a Dyneema denim. The first iteration of the Jane Dyneema was uh, 50, like 56% cotton, 40x% Dyneema, um, and about 2% elastine. These, which I'll throw comparative photos up, the, the original Jane Dyneema had that sort. This new iteration reminds me more of Armolith in the way that it is, uh, which is another brand name for Dyneema, UHW, MPE, all these different names for the same, you know, molecular structured fabric, Spectra, uh, which, which um, another brand uses, all the same thing. Okay, so this is a different weave. So they've gone on a 25% Dyneema. Um, we know from objective motocap testing that low Dyneema fabrics have not done amazing. High Dyneema fabrics have not done amazing in a single layer either for that matter. But I, it, it is my very personal opinion that for fabrics that Motocap have tested, and again, they're a, they're a third party independent um, university and, and like government of Australia affiliated test organization, anything that they test that gets around a second and a half in their abrasion testing is going to be absolutely fine in your average motorcyclist crash. Why do I say that? Because the average motorcyclist crashes 
at about 45 miles an hour or slower. And so a full second and a half on their most of like really abrasive, abrasive um, sandpaper that is meant to simulate chip seal, which is a road that we don't even have that much around here in the US. It's I guess more pro prominent in Europe and Australia. Um, so to be at least a second and a half, like that, that's a long slide. That, that I think you'd be fine in something that, that was a second and a half most of the time. Um, and even if it did hold, because these are all ripstop, it wouldn't be very much. Again, this doesn't rip, uh, Deneva doesn't rip, um, so that, that's a big deal. These have a, about the same amount of slip liner, um, primarily these armor pockets. So again, the previous one had more of a slip liner. I, I think that would, it would be nice if it still had that, especially at the bum. Um, but um, I think these are fairly safe. Okay. My last two here. I don't know. I don't know how safe these are beyond being AAA. And we've kind of talked about how AAA is difficult to decipher how things are comparative within it. And I'll go a little further here because I live in the US and I can make statements without people suing me too much. Is um, I believe that it is rip stop materials that are the big thing holding back a lot of double-A rated textiles. Why do I say that? Well, because I have seen things like this get triple-A. This John Doe fabric is 69% cotton, 22% nylon, 1.5% elastine, 2.5% aramid, and 5% polyester. So it is basically a Cordura denim because most Cordura denims are about 60, 60, 30 or um, 70, 30, no, 70, 20 something load of stretch. Anyway, they're fairly similar nylons, but they don't get AAA. They can't because my understanding is they would rip uh, based on the rip and tear strength. So this has basically Nile, uh, aramid in it, probably woven in as a ripstop. So it can pass the AAA rating of a material at, a, at both abrasion, tear, and um, uh, burst resistance for the seams. So, I mean, it's 70% cotton. I, I just, I don't see how these can be as protective as for instance, these two. I could be wrong. I just haven't seen these tested independently either. I just, I don't see it. I've seen a lot of other single layers come in well under a second in motocap testing. And I think these would be very similar. And same story here. This is mainly cotton with a bunch of poly, polyester. Uh, we know that polyester is usually not the most protective um, item. So I don't think these are super protective either as a single layer gene if you're crashing fast compared to these two. Again, I could be wrong, but I'm just ba based off of what I know and would have seen from Motocap, these blends are mainly cotton with other materials that aren't super abrasion resistant. Okay, what does that all mean? Well, I think these are great for urban riding or dual sport riding, which is what I do primarily. And when I've crashed, it's been relatively slow. So I would have no problem wearing these urban. I would have no problem wearing these for dual sport touring, adventure touring, because if you go down on gravel, these are going to hold together. Um, whereas Cordura uh, denim, you know, the outer, you may get a hole in it. I don't think these would hold. I think that's, and they keep the armor in place. And it's the armor that's the big thing, right? That's your secondary abrasion uh, layer. And it's what's keeping your limbs in place. I think that these two are probably more abrasion resistant comparatively. Um, so all that being said, where do I wash out? Well, these three are all very comfortable to wear. These two have gussets, which I just prefer. This one I think is the most protective of the three. So my personal favorite of the four are the speedies. I think the John Doe's are the most comfortable to wear on a bike from a gusseting perspective. I think the race res are the nicest to wear around because they have the softest fabric and externally removable pockets and I wish these had a gusset but the aramid is what's holding these back for me I find them a little warm they're a good cooler weather pant 
and they look the best on me. So that's four different pairs of AAA rated jeans. If you have any questions or concerns um, about these, let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to answer in probably way too much detail. Um, but again, I've worn all of these out. I've done between thousands, a couple thousand maybe, um, and a little bit because I just got these in and wanted to do this video. Um, but I've worn all these on the bike in temperatures over 80 to kind of give a good bit of feedback. So hopefully this was helpful to people um, and, and helps you understand how some single layer jeans might stack up, what that all means. And um, yeah, 